Hello, everyone. Um, I see everybody's got their cell phones, and so if someone would do me the favor at some point of taking a picture of me standing next to this giant TED sign so I, and email it to me so I can send it to my mother, that would be great. <laughs> I, I'm 61 years old, and my mother keeps asking me, what exactly is it you do? <laughs> so, so I'm going to... Um, talk about something extraordinary happening here in Cleveland, in our city. And I want to say, uh, I'm sure all of you saw in the paper a few weeks ago that the census statistics came out and indicated that our city had lost 17% of its population over the last decade. But I just moved to Cleveland, so I'm part of the rebuilding of the population. I came from Washington, D.C. last year. I live in Little Italy, sorry for those of you on the west side, I live on the east side. I've come to learn about the Great Divide. Um, and I want to tell you why I came to Cleveland. And it's because something really exciting and important and poten potentially transformative, a real possible breakthrough is happening in this city. It's something with broad national implications, especially for those of us concerned with the fate of our great urban areas concerned about job creation, concerned about poverty, about sustainability, about wealth and equality, about the direction of our country. It's known in the media and in the halls of government in Washington, D.C., and I was just in Washington speaking yesterday. It's known as the Cleveland model. And in these partisan and divisive times of political stalemate and the right-left divide we have in this country, what's happening here in Cleveland has been praised over the last year by sources as varied as The Economist and Business Week, which no one is ever accused of being left-wing and radical, and The Nation magazine, which no one is ever accused of being conservative. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams has praised this effort and so is Al Jazeera English. A senior leader at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the number two person in charge of HUD, has said what's happening here in Cleveland, in quotes, is brilliant. And as a result, HUD is beginning to change its policies for how it interacts with cities around the country. And we're told this summer, in June, Reader's Digest will feature the Cleveland model in its annual Best of America issue. Now, when is the last time you've heard that cast of characters agreeing about anything? But they're agreeing about something happening here in Cleveland. So what is the Cleveland model? In a moment, I'm going to step aside and let some very good people tell you about the Cleveland model in a six-minute video. And what you'll see is a story, and it's a story about a Rust Belt city, our city, which is often ranked, as you know, in the top five poorest cities in America, leaving that legacy behind with a cutting edge job creation wealth building strategy, unlike anything being attempted in the United States today. It's a story about leveraging the assets we have, the large anchor institutions, the universities, the hospitals, museums, and so forth, rather than chasing for the next big bet to try to become the next biotech center or the next computer center, but building on what we have. It's a story of a remarkable pulling together of world-class institutions and the residents of low-income neighborhoods that historically have not gotten together very well but realize that their fates are inextricably bound up together. It's a story about impact investing and the strategic use of social capital and resources that can bring hope and transformation to a city and to a set of neighborhoods. And it's a story about learning from abroad. You know, as Americans, I worked in international development a long time and with the United Nations, and we tend to think, as Americans, we know best for everybody else in the world. Well, there's a lot of wisdom out there in the world, and this is a story about learning from the world, specifically the Basque region of Spain in an area called Mondragon that you'll hear about a little. And importantly, it's a story about how white and black and brown people in our city and people of different socioeconomic backgrounds who never had come together before can pull together out of a recognition that their fates are inextricably bound up. So let me begin before the video to show you a few slides. First this, 
The Evergreen Cooperative Initiative, the goals are threefold. Create jobs, 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 jobs in an area of our city where there's precious little economic opportunity. Create wealth, not just jobs, not just an entry level sal salary, but the things that you and I take for granted, that we have bank accounts, we may have savings accounts. Those people my age hopefully will have retirement accounts. And it's an effort to stabilize neighborhoods and begin to revitalize them. The issues we're seeking to address, I won't belabor all this, but as we designed this strategy, we asked ourselves some key questions, like at a time when jobs are moving out of our city, how do we create good jobs here? At a time when capital and business flies around the world and moves to China, how do we root capital so it doesn't get up and leave? Where do we find financing for job creation at a time of constrained uh, governmental budgets? How do we turn green jobs, this promise of green jobs, into a reality today rather than training people for green jobs and at the end of the training process, there are no jobs for them? And again, how do we stabilize and revitalize neighborhoods? This is the footprint of the area. Those of you from Cleveland, I think almost all of you are, you recognize this, the blue circle is University Circle where the big anchor institutions are. Those are the neighborhoods surrounding it. You know the institutions are multi-billion dollar enterprises. On this map, all the little green dots you see up there in the yellow dots, that's vacant land. Land that used to have uh, factories, houses, and so forth on it. This, all these red colored dots, those buildings in poor and unsound condition. Tax delinquencies, foreclosures, all of this data, by the way, is over five years old, so it's before the recent foreclosure crisis. And you put that together, and that's the look of the neighborhood. Anything in color there is bad. So the goal here is to transform that. So I'd like to show you the six-minute videotape and conclude with a few last remarks. So if we could go to that, please. Cooperatives is a network of employee-owned businesses. We are looking at a new paradigm for creating wealth in the Cleveland community. We will create a network of for-profit businesses that will hire from the neighborhoods and the employees will own the businesses that are created. It can't be just another initiative. I think for all of us, we want this to have meaning and scale and to be transformative. And it's just that simple. As this is more than a job, this is an ownership opportunity. Having uh, people able to participate in the creation and access to wealth that would normally be excluded is, is the really the best part of this. I envision being one of the owners to make the decisions about Evergreen and expanding. As these businesses grow, uh, that, that roots these, these uh, projects in the community long term. That's good for us because as we reestablish relationships and create new supply chains and new service relationships, uh, we don't have to go back and revisit them, you know, as companies move in and out of the market and things like that. It can't do nothing but benefit the neighborhood. When you make money and you spend your money where you make it at, it gets to float around. And when it floats around, it, it benefits everybody that touches it. It isn't just a job, it is their future long term. And we think that can really help bring about some positive change in the neighborhood. I had some good people out there that believed in me and they gave me a second chance. And so I can plan for my future now. They are really willing to put the hard work necessary to make a difference in their own lives and the lives of their families. They're revitalizing their neighborhood and taking ownership of their future. We are investing through our purchase of services in the employees who uh, will end up owning the businesses. Over the next three to four years, we think we can create somewhere 500, 600 jobs in these uh, low-income neighborhoods of Greater University Circle. What we're doing is catalyzing something. We're catalyzing you know, a whole new grouping of companies. That's not construction, that's not salaries of their staff, uh, that is to 
purchase uh, food, and it's for things like laundry. We're market driven, but instead of being investor driven as well, we're, we're worker owner driven. And we determine uh, pretty accurately that there's 250 million pounds of healthcare bed linen available annually. With recent legislation, Ohio has a mandate to create 60 megs of solar generating capacity in the year 2012. And right now there's two. We're targeting several megawatts over the next couple of years and you know that's on the order of nothing that's been done in Ohio to date. It's going to be a great day to be knowing that we are helping to generate some power in a clean, environmentally responsible way. This is a laboratory for a new kind of economic development. It's actually a career, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to be involved with it, because it's not just a job. This is different. It is higher risk. It's not based upon the social service model, but the business model and the co-op um, ownership model. It could serve as a, a model, not just here, but, but other places in the same way it helped in, uh, in Spain. It, it, it could be that here, too. It offers a bootstrap strategy for pulling yourself up with your own resources. Be that here, too. As this company expand, so do your wealth. Less than a week's time, learn how to run everything in here, and also teach other people what I, you know what I've learned. You know, we're not asking for dollars to stop at one company or two companies. If we can keep going to 20 and 30 companies and get to the scale that they experienced in Mondragon, that's I think one definition of success. In five years, where this is going to go, I think. I'll most cities is gonna jump on or, or wanna look at what we're doing here and, and use us as a model. Cleveland wants to be where the world is going, not where the world is. Just being a part of Evergreen in general is tremendous. And I believe it's more of a part of a, a green city on a blue lake. I, I thought I would have to move to Portland, Oregon to be part of the green revolution. Uh, being here in Cleveland, it's good. it looks like we're going to spearhead what's going on. This really is just the beginning. It's a great model. You know, this is a real deal. And you can see the guys over here and the ladies that are going to own this company. Um, and what an incredible opportunity. My name is Michael McNary, and I am an employee of Ohio Solar Cooperative, and I'm also an owner. It is really a great day for Cleveland. It's a great day for the employee owners. It's really a great day for all of us working together. It is comprehensive and very thoughtfully planned. It is transformative in a way that enhances the quality of life for all of those who will be touched by it. It is innovative and unique, and it provides sustainable services to Cleveland's institutions. I just envision us being everywhere in Cleveland, like we'll have plenty of them. Like every time you turn around, you'll see Evergreen. So those are the people of Evergreen. Uh, we have several companies up and running. We have many more in the pipeline. Our goal over the next three or four years is to create 500 jobs here in Cleveland that are owned by the people who work in them. Our bigger goal and our question is, how do we create 5,000 jobs to really transform this part of the city with 43,000 residents? So that's the Cleveland model. And these are early days yet, and success is fragmentary, and creating a small business is a heck of a lot of work, and it ain't easy, whether you're doing it as an individual entrepreneur or as a worker-owned company. But even at this early stage of our development, the eyes of the nation are upon us. We've had delegations from many cities, and in fact, there's an, a parallel effort now modeled on what we've done in Atlanta, Georgia. We're beginning in Pittsburgh, in Washington, D.C., in Richmond, California, and elsewhere. This summer, by the way, at Cleveland State University, we'll have an, or this fall, we'll have an evergreen summit with people from around the country. And those of you interested, please feel free to email me or call me at the Cleveland Foundation. Let me close my remarks by saying a word about you. We've talked about the people of Evergreen, but about you. 
Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us that life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And as Helen Keller once reminded another generation of Americans, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Thank you for being here in that spirit, and remember, owning your own job is a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you.